Hello, and welcome to the introduction to uh, social online annotations, or um, as I like to think of it, how to make uh, online reading better. Um, my name is Juan Pablo Alperin. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in the School of Publishing at Simon Fraser University. I've been using social online annotations with a tool called Hypothesis in my own classrooms for about six years now. Um, I've had really good success with it, so I wanted to share a little bit what, um, what social annotations are, um, how they will benefit you as a student, and uh, a little bit about how you might use them to get really the most of those benefits. So let's get started. First, what are social annotations and social online annotations? Well, annotations, you can think of them as comments that get left in the margins of, uh, of books, but in the case of online annotations, they'll be left in the margins of web pages or PDFs that you're reading online. The social part of it comes that you can interact with each other. You'll be able to see each other's comments and, and uh, things that you're leaving in the margins and respond to one another and comment with one another. So you are starting to turn this experience of leaving comments uh, into a one where you're socializing with each other. Um, let me just show you very quickly what that looks like. In a second video that I'll post, I'll actually show you how to make the annotations and some of the affordances and some of the ways that that might work. Um, so just look in the comments of this uh, or in the description of this video, and I will uh, leave a link to the second video that will be a sort of a screencast showing you how to make these things happen. But if we look here as a standard New Yorker, uh, page. Uh, it's in particular, there's an article about how to be a better online reader. Um, uh, and what the social annotations or the, the we're using the tool called Hypothesis will look like is very much just like you might imagine here. You, we're going to have a little drawer that pulls out into the side of the, um, of the page. And in that comment, you're going to see that people have left comments, as well as you can see that people leave replies to one another in, the, in those responses. Bits of text get highlighted, so each one of those comments is attached to some particular words that are on that web page that's online. And just to show it to you a little bit closer, if I just zoom in so you can just see the comments, you can see at the top there in light gray the text that was highlighted and where that comment is attached to, the student's comment, and then below it the response from a, from a different student. Of course, the annotations need not be just text. Here's an example of in a different um, in a different reading, students, uh, this was a particular so reading about uh, an image, a copyrighted image, and that was being discussed. Student came in annotated with the image itself so that people knew what it is that we're talking about. Let's just sort of get down to it. Why would you start doing this kind of thing? Why would you start, uh, on every reading that you do, start starting to leave your comments in the margins for everybody else to see and for everyone else in your class to, to interact with? Well, the first is for exactly that reason. So it actually is going to give you a, a window into how other people in your class are reading. And you might you know, be very good at reading uh, online and understanding the text and figuring things out. But do you really have a sense of what other people's thought process is when they, are, when they read their works? Are they finding the same bits interesting? Are they having some of the same ideas and maybe just not? Uh, and then maybe those never get shared. Annotations are going to give you a little insight. And it's actually one of the things that students in the research we've done have told us is one of the main things that they like about annotations is that they're exposed to other people's perspectives and ideas. And seeing how it is that they're reading um, is a great value. And so you're going to understand what other people's ideas and perspectives are, how they're reading, what they're, where they're stopping, where they're stumbling, what kind of challenges that they're having. Sort of second or, or sort of third advantage here is that um, if you're being asked to annotate by your instructor, as I am in my class, um, it's going to cause you, it's going to sort of force you to read closely to the text. Because if you're trying to think about what comments you're going to be leaving, you can't just be kind of skimming and, and getting just the gist of it. If you're doing that, you're not going to be able to pause and leave a comment or ask a question along uh, with what you're doing. It's also going to make you read all the way to the end because, like it or not, like if there's no comments at the end, uh, well, it means that you probably didn't get there. So it's going to sort of uh, bring that to light. Again, this is something students themselves have told me, something that they like about annotations, even though it just sort of seems like, oh, now you're actually going to have to do what you've been asked to do. Um, Another thing is that it, this is especially true of some students who have a harder time participating in the classroom. It's going to help you to participate in a way that may be more comfortable for you. So if you are someone that um, is not the first person to put up their hand or speak up in a group, now that we're all teaching online and working online, maybe even the Zoom environment is one in which you find it harder to interject and jump in. This is going to be a chance to actually participate and be involved uh, in the discussions uh, in a way that you can do it at your own pace and in your own way. Um, one thing that I really hope that, uh, is a result of all of this is that it makes sort of reading 
a little bit more social. It's that instead of this being this isolated thing that you're doing uh, alone in your apartment, now you're having uh, interactions and, and hopefully it might even make it fun to be doing your readings because you can be having conversations as you do. And those conversations, as we uh, are going to talk a little bit about, don't necessarily have to be purely academic the whole time. And I'll get to that uh, in a minute. Um, and then lastly, uh, and this is, again, we have research to back this up, is that we know that learning actually happens in the annotations. We, we have documented evidence of sort of knowledge construction activities that happen around getting questions, answers, and clarifications and understanding. So we're generating knowledge and understanding. And that's gonna be um, something that I hope is one of the driving motivations for you to do, is to know that if you are annotating, you are going to be learning. And that's a, that's a, that's a learning that wouldn't necessarily be happening if you weren't, uh, you weren't annotating. Uh, and if none of those are sort of compelling or convincing enough, let me just read you a couple of things um, because I think if nothing else should get you to want to annotate is that I can attest now that I've been doing it for six years that past students really tell me that it's great. Like they really enjoy doing uh, the process of doing the annotations and they feel like they get quite a bit out of it. So I just want to read you a couple of quotes just as inspiration to, to see how you might end up feeling at the end of having done this for the full semester. So in what is probably my favorite of all of the times I've collected feedback, um, let me just read you this quote because I think it captures a lot of those benefits and, and reasons that I was talking about. So one student said, I enjoyed reading the annotations alongside the text primarily because it helps me engage with the text at the sentence level. I am the product of an educational system where annotation and critical reading was not encouraged and not taught. So using the hypothesis tool, the tool that we're gonna be using, uh, really helps me to understand how to read critically as opposed to just absorbing information. Says, I've actually asked my friends, students and professors outside of Vancouver to use this tool. Um, another uh, student said, the hypothesis annotations were surprising and amazing which, a way in which I could unpack issues like this. The ability to respond to specific ideas and have the opportunity to receive feedback in an almost chat-like setting was like no educational experience I've had. Uh, most important, uh, was how it helped foreground classroom discussions, allowing those who might not usually speak uh, up share their opinions. Okay, just a couple more here just to give you a, a full sense of this is not just one or two students that like it, but it really is a, a dominant um, perspective. Someone said, I'm a slow thinker and generally spend a lot of time doing something that most people do at a fraction of my time, including putting my thoughts into words. The online annotations allowed me to participate in discussions around the readings in a capacity I cannot achieve in seminar discussions. So they actually prefer these online annotations to the discussions that you might have face to face. And then just a, a little bit more for, um, because I, you know, I just love the honesty here. And so the, the student said, to be completely honest, I was never one to read every reading fully. And this forced me to, which I admit was not a bad thing. I mean, as professors, we assign these readings because we want you to learn from them. And if the annotations are a way to make sure that you're actually reading them and getting the most out of it, then you will uh, be learning more as a result, which we'll consider to be a nice job well done. Uh, and then now just to pivot away from the students and what the students have been telling me, why, all the reasons why you would want to annotate. I just want to very briefly tell you why I, as an instructor, I also really um, try to encourage this practice of annotation. This is all the pedagogical reasons that we're sort of getting into about all the benefits that you're going to get, which are obviously part of my motivation, but just to give you a few additional things around the way that I think about annotations in my classroom, which is especially relevant if you are in one of my classrooms right now and watching this, um, but I think something that we can all consider and, and think about regardless of where we're doing this. I think of kind of these things as kind of layering on top of, uh, on top of each other. So some of my personal uh, motivations sort of work. It has a bit of a logic that goes like this. Um, the annotation sort of puts the student's ideas and, and the thinking that you're doing, your thoughts, your concerns at the center of the course. So right, as you're doing the readings, you're going to be surfacing those things on the readings themselves on a week to week basis. And that's something that I can, um, that we are going to then uh, center all of the experience in the classroom around. And I think that's going to be something that's very important. Related to that, by putting those thoughts and ideas at the center of the class and giving some sort of control over how the classes, the discussions go, um, I think that these readings are going to hopefully promote the notion that your knowledge, right, that is worth 
sharing with others. And, and that is the thinking that I have. I said, if you get used to sharing your thoughts and ideas and you see how others react, hopefully you'll understand and you'll kind of grow to appreciate that this is how your ideas can, are really worth um, being out there in the open. And in doing that, I'm hoping to have this is now we're getting into the loftier, grander goals, all right? I'm hoping that this fosters civic engagement, right? That if you feel like you're the kind of person whose opinions and thoughts should be shared, then you'll participate in discussions that happen out in society more broadly, and that those discussions will be very important. And finally, I think that um, by doing that, we'll be asserting and uh, helping to assert sort of the public missions that universities have. Uh, if you are remembering that part of what you're learning in your classroom is to be good, active uh, civic um, participants, then this is what I think the university should really be um, should be about and should be encouraging to do. How would we go about actually uh, going to get them? Right? And how are we going to make sure that, how are you going to do the annotations and how are we going to structure what you do with those annotations? Um, if you are sort of watching this with a more instrumentalist view, this is what I want you to do with your annotations. I want you to just take that next, what I say in the next couple of uh, slides and, um, and think about this as like, this is the assignment that you have. This is the mission uh, of what to do with the annotations. The first is to just go uh, to the hypothesis uh, tool and I'll post a link as well in the description of the video. Um, but just sign up, create a free account with uh, Hypothesis, um, add Hypothesis to your browser, whether and I'll, this is what I'll do in the other video by either through the Chrome extension or through the bookmarklet, and then you can sort of start annotating. But more importantly, how do I want you to start annotating? What do I want you to do with these annotations? How do I think that we might get the most benefit out of, um, out of this practice? Um, it is to use them to make a meaningful contributions to the class discussion. And what does that mean? And for me, I think of this as doing a combination of all of the following. Um, to insert new ideas for discussion, respond to each other's ideas, ask questions, answer questions, highlight just passages that are interesting, something that just jumps out at you. Explain a tricky concept, or if you can't explain it, just identify it as a tricky concept, something that you don't have your head fully around, and just sort of put that out there, and you can flag it as a question for someone to ex help explain it to you. Um, offer a, your, an informed opinion about something. So if you have some thoughts about uh, how you are understanding whatever we're reading, then offer that opinion. You can back that up. You can include evidence. You can include an argument. You can make these as long or as short as you want. Um, and in related to that, you can bring in additional resources. If something that you're reading is sort of uh, reminds you of some other text or some other video or something else, some other resource that you found, bring it into the discussions. Good annotations sort of end up taking all of these different forms, not all at once. In some readings, you might focus on doing a lot of one. In others, you might have a hodgepodge. You're not going to do all of these all of the time. But I just want you to have this as sort of a menu that you're always choosing from. And you want to make sure you have a nice varied diet as you're pulling from, um, from that menu. Okay? But also, I don't want you... I also really want you to think about these things. That's sort of all of the academic -y things that you can do with the annotations. But I also don't want you to be afraid to just be yourself and just interact with your peers. Cheer each other on when someone uh, says something that you find particularly insightful and you found it really useful. Uh, share anecdotes with one another. Share GIFs, memes, TikTok videos. Whatever else is sort of like it, it, you comes to mind that you would like to share and use this to be a place where you actually are enjoying interacting with your peers. If you're enjoying the experience of reading, you're going to come back to those readings. You're going to come back to them one time and time again. You're going to uh, interact and, and return to the conversations. And that's how we're going to have a fulsome discussion. And those fulsome discussions are where all of that learning is really going to happen because you're going to have a chance to have your thoughts, your questions um, explored. You're going to have a chance to formulate your own ideas as you do that. And that's where all of the benefits that we were talking about will, will start to happen. Um, as you do these, like I was saying, annotations, they can be very short. Like you can basically do like a plus one and a thumbs up, like a, this is great, thanks for sharing kind of comments. You can write full essays into these comments. You can include images and embed them. You can include links. They can be short little paragraphs. They can be one word. They can be a full on essay. You take and do these. Um, uh, with these annotations, whatever comes natural. You'll develop your own annotation style as time goes on. You'll learn how your peers in your class are annotating, and so you'll, you'll get into a rhythm and you'll get into a dynamic as the weeks go on. So just uh, go on, get started, get annotating, 
Um, I'll post a link to how to actually do it and some of the things that you might be able to do with, with your annotations, how to use the tool itself uh, in the description to this video. Um, and I'll see you on the text that we're reading. Thanks for watching.